Hello everyone, today's film is all about alliums and chiefly about leeks, which we'll get to in a minute, and about some of this garlic, shallots, onions, elephant garlic as well. So let's get on with the film. Now, I always sow onions on 26th of December, Boxing Day, it's traditional. Leeks I do a bit later because they're not quite as uh, traditional. You can do it if you want to, and I know some people do, but I prefer to do the onions, get back inside the warm, because it's generally cold on Boxing Day, out the greenhouse, back inside the warm, and carry on with Christmas celebrations. But um, I sowed these in early January, and I station sowed them, so putting one or two seeds in each little station across in a grid pattern, and normally these do very well. Now, I did say in the video, which I'll run a little bit for you now, and I will need, at some stage, to feed these that I was going to feed them. These have been right at the back of the polytunnel and they haven't been fed, so they look a bit pale and a bit, they almost look like dry grass. But they will come back because I've got some more leeks over there that two months ago were looking worse than this. And we'll go and have a look at them now. So these I will use. We'll go and have a look at the others. Now, when I sow my leeks, I normally sow a couple of batches. I normally do this station sowed one here and these were actually grown in a pot and I'm running a little bit of film just now so you can see it. So I always sow an extra pot of these. These are for backups. Loosely broadcast some seed over the top of this. This is something I do every year, just have a backup. I just put half a packet of seeds across the top of a pot, as you can see, and let them grow on and they're my backups. Now what I did two months ago was I separated all them up, which hopefully I'm showing you now as well. All I'm going to do, what I want to do, is just break these apart and then, because I use safe compost, I can mostly just shake off all that loose compost and then just plant these into a whole row, just sort of earth them in, dug a trench, laid them in the trench and just put the compost back over them and just look at them now. I mean, that is quite phenomenal. And this growth here <coughs> is what I would expect here if I'd have fed these properly, which I didn't do. They were at the back of the polytunnel, surrounded by plants, and I just kind of forgot they weren't in my face like they should have been. So they didn't get fed. These have been fed because they're in a no-dig bed, and they've taken advantage of that. So what I'm going to be doing now is digging these up and planting them out properly as single leeks, moving them on, because they've had all this extra growth and they're looking brilliant. These I'm also going to plant, and I'm going to plant as bunches um, to give me sort of smallish leeks later on in the season, which leads me on to these grey ones at the back. These were multi sown This is a new addition to what I do with my leeks in the last few years, a multi sow leeks to give me baby leeks um, through the through the autumn leading up till Christmas and then we sort of transfer to these bigger leeks after Christmas so it's chopping and changing all the way and different harvests at different times hopefully and you know always having more than one card in your pocket so to speak so if one bit fails there's another bit to go at anyway we'll get some of these dug up and I'll show you how I go about planting these so first of all <coughs> excuse me just need to dig some of these up. Yeah, and I know it's a no dig bed. Needs must. And see, now, look at that. These will all separate kind of nicely just by a little bit of manipulation and a bit of shaking off. There we go, you can see that they're now coming apart. They just need cleaning off. You can wash them if you want to. That's another nice easy way of doing it. Just rinse them in a bucket of water. The soil will fall off. And you're good to go. So you probably can't see it, but the, the leaks I got were from the other end of this bed. And what I've got here is my planting grid just a bit of old wire mesh fence panelling and I use that to get my spacings not so much equal and ordered and that but it just if you 
so if you put your plants in in rows it just makes it easier to weed and <clears throat> I've got my legs there I did wash them in the end just to help get them apart because I could hear some roots cracking so I didn't really want that so I'm just going to dibble some fairly deep holes probably four or five inches deep along this this mesh and they're probably I would say four or five inches apart and the idea is that you just drop a leak in each hole and you grab a couple decent sized leaks I mean these are wonderful and then just basically pop them in the hole when you water them the soil from the surface will go around those roots push the roots down and your plants can grow away happily now at this depth they're still in a no dig soil as opposed to the soil underneath because these beds are still relatively new so I'm only planting them shallow because I want them to get the benefits of the feeding from the no dig soil um, so there won't be great amounts of blanched leak so to speak which is this white part you really want this covered up but you know I'm happy with that well there we go that's as simple as leak planting gets and I will feed them during the season as well there we go leaks job done nice and easy and good leaks now so I've got these in there's about 150 here would you believe just in this little area and yeah they look a little bit floppy but they should pick up in time they may even grow in cockeyed don't care as long as I get leaks out at the end of the season I'm not really that that fussed to be honest now when I was a lad and we used to go to the allotments um, it was the dumb thing that you knew potatoes would come out the ground and as you were doing that by the very fact that you were digging your potatoes up your ground was dug and it would be leveled off afterwards and because you'd fed the ground manure for the potatoes it was nice rich ground for your leeks to go in so that's how leeks used to be planted at least in my youth um, the ground would be all leveled off the holes dibbled and the plants put in and they were there fed and they followed on from your new potatoes so that's about right because I'll be digging my first potatoes or probably next week so the time is right for the final planting and a couple of things of note with a plant this sort of size like this just a normal bog standard small leek pencil thick if there's too many roots on the end here or they're too thick or there's too many of them don't be afraid to chop them off they'll come to no harm whatsoever they'll carry on growing but they'll go into the hole quicker and if also like these here they're all flopping over what you could do is literally just rip that off that plant even with that broken one will come to no harm and if I plant that that will grow absolutely no problem whatsoever just kind of being lazy there they will either grow up straight or they won't but I will get leaks and that's the important thing and while we're here this fella behind as you can see this here that's my, my sweet corn the lid's off it now this is growing away wickedly good now we're still getting a lot of high winds but this is protecting these plants from rocking away and breaking these fragile shallow roots that sweet corn have so that's definitely a boon and I just thought I'd point that out now while we're here we'll have a quick look at the rest of my alliums these are all my zebron shallots you can see these are all looking marvellously good quite thick around the base so very pleased with how these are going I've only just recently weeded this about four days ago that's why the foliage all looks messed around so there's mostly shallots in here I only grow a few onions but here's the onions up here and there's a mix I think these up here are ailsas and then moving into the my favorite the Bedfordshire champ in here so we'll have a few onions and I've got some red onions over on the companion bed <laughs> way off over then in that direction but moving around from here my elephant garlic this is just about ready now I'll pick this in a couple of weeks I'll just keep my eye on it but picking this week is this lot this is my garlic and it was planted last year 
Um, I don't know the exact date actually, I'll try and find out and flash it on the screen. This has got a touch of rust, as you can see on here. And I'll just set the camera up, I'll dig one or two up now, just to show you while we're here. Um, but I'm getting the rest of this up through the week. So I have no idea what these are like yet. Actually, these don't look too bad. Oh yeah, happy with that. I'll just pull these front three up, three up. Yeah, so they're good size bulbs. That one's slightly on the smaller side. But even with the rust, they're perfectly edible. Very happy with them actually. Marvellous. So whilst this garlic is yellow and you can see it's ready for harvest and it will be all harvested this week, I'll pull the lot, maybe tomorrow or the day after. You can see these onions, oh, sorry, these shallots behind me and the onions further down, they're still green, they're still growing, they're still swelling. As were these, and probably still would a little bit more because there's still plenty of green in them, even with that rust. But you can see that the, the colours between them, you know, are most definitely different. They're still green, but these are really good garlic bulbs. Probably the best I've grown for a couple of years, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, so I am very, very happy with them. And just to add to that, what I've also done is I've just pulled one of the elephant garlic bulbs just to have a look at it. And there we go. That's straight out of the ground today. Complete with a full few bull bills. Never bothered trying to grow those. I did a few years ago. Didn't end well. Took ages. But those I'm incredibly happy with. And all that on a year where the weather has been absolutely appalling for me. It really has. Don't whinge about it. I get on with it. I whinge about compost. I don't whinge about the weather because I can't control that. But yeah, the weather has been challenging, which is why I use all my experience, if you like, from what I've learned over the time I've been gardening, all those decades, and use that to the best of my ability to get the best crops out. Like that sweet corn I showed you earlier, that just protects the crop makes them grow bigger and it means that I will get two to three cobs per stem as opposed to just one if it remains small because if it remains small and unprotected the wind will rock it break the roots and it will never really develop but by growing the plants big under protection I'll get more cobs on them so these are just some of the things that you know you pick up over the years and it helps you to get there with your harvest I mean another thing I'm doing is planting button or squash in the tunnels in two tunnels I've got some more to plant in the little one so rather than outside at the moment where the weather's terrible I'll grow them indoors and they'll flourish in there but anyway that's it for today's Allium special if you like I hope you've enjoyed that got some of it from it and I'll see you again in a few days look after yourselves everyone take care and I'll see you all very very soon Terrano I'm very pleased with these look at them Plonkers.